Welcome to If Numbers Could Talk. My name is Keelan. If Numbers Could Talk is a part of the Thinkering Group. You can find us over at thinkering.space. You can also find at Thinkering Space the Thinkering Talks podcast, the Exofathom podcast, along with the Plank Talks with Joe. When you get a chance, please check out our merchandise. We have merchandise on our website, thinkering.space, as well as merchandise at teespring.com slash thinkering shop. Please visit, grab a t-shirt, grab a mug. We'll appreciate it. And when you do, feel free to let us know that you've decided to become a member of any of our fan clubs. Welcome today. I appreciate everyone for joining. Today's episode will be about NFL families, not just any NFL families. Like, you know, you could be an NFL family just if one player made it and that player made so much off of the NFL that they were able to benefit their entire family in different businesses. That could be one way to go with this. We could be talking about NFL families in the sense of dynasties or dynasties, as some people say. I just heard that recently. Um, but, you know, the organizations, the types of players that's come through, that's another type of NFL family. But those aren't the kind of NFL families we're speaking of today. Today, we're talking about actual families, siblings that made it to the NFL individually and how far they went. Now, today we'll be focused specifically on two NFL players, and that is in one family and what their numbers look like and how far they went. However, I will name a bunch of others, and I just thought it was interesting in my research to find out that there was really no annotation. There was really no numbers kept, at least from what I could find, before 2016. But that's from what I could find. That doesn't mean it's not there. My research just didn't come across it, right? I'm sure it's there somewhere. Maybe I have. Maybe I had to pay for the information and um, my, my bank account was too tight for it. Who knows? <laughs> but um, from 2016 and to date, there have been 377 recorded sets of brothers in the NFL. And that is according to ProFootballHallOfFame.com. According to ProFootballHallOfFame.com, there have only been, or excuse me, there have been 377 recorded sets of brothers. That's two and three. Could be two brothers, could be three brothers, but there have been 377 from 2016. But, you know, we all are aware that that goes from known to unknown, right? So let's just go through a list of some people that you may have known had brothers, some people you may not have known had brothers. Um, and also something I thought interesting from uh, 2016 to date, a lot of the brother pairs that I know was like in the 90s, in the early 2000s. There was even brothers that played together in the 70s. So we're well, not together, but uh, in the NFL at the exact same time. So let's go over a few of them. You have, of course, Shannon and Sterling Sharp. A lot of people are aware of them. Rondé and Tiki Barber. Michael and Martellus Bennett. JJ, TJ, and Derek Watt. Chris and Kyle Long. Terrell, Trey, and Tremaine Edmonds, whose father also played in the NFL. Dustin Britton and, oh, excuse me, Dustin <laughs> Colquitt and Britton Colquitt, whose father also was in the NFL. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm not actually sure how to pronounce their first names, but I'm aware of who these players are. Rahib and Quadri Ismael, Marcus, Isaiah, and Desmond Trufant, Jason and Devin McCourty. These are just brothers, families in the NFL or that have been through the NFL. And a lot of them I'm naming are people that are uh, somewhat relevant or that you may know their names. Jason and Devin McCourty. William and Michael Perry, that's right. William the Refrigerator Perry had a brother, Michael, who actually um, won the, uh, was 6 and 0 in the Pro Bowl, like, was in six Pro Bowls and 
one that uh, was on the winning side of the Pro Bowls. He was in. That's kind of interesting. That's a pretty interesting stat. Um, Vernon and Vontae Davis. Michael and Maurice Pouncey. Sam and Randall Cunningham. I didn't even know Randall Cunningham had a brother that played in the NFL. And then we get to today's pairing, the two gentlemen that I'll be covering today. And this is not, again, that list can be so much longer. Um, Cam Newton's brother was in the NFL before he was. He got drafted in uh, 2009, I believe it was, or something of that nature. But yeah, Cam Newton's brother was also in the NFL. He was in a, I believe he's a defensive lineman. But just saying, there are quite a few guys who had siblings in the NFL that we may not have known about. Um, Same with a lot of sports, if I'm being honest. And there's a lot in my research, I discovered there are a lot of guys, um, even your your um, brother matches, a lot of them, their fathers or even some of them, their uncles were in the NFL before them. And by them being in the NFL before them, it kind of just opened the doors in the NBA. I know um, you have. uh the Grants, you have Horace and Brian Grant and um, Jeremy and Jerry and Grant, who is, I believe they are Brian Grant's kids. That part I do not know, um, but they are related to Horace and Brian Grant. Brian Grant, they are all in the same family and they are now in the NBA doing their thing um, the same way the generation before them came and did their thing. And it, that is my point is there are multiple groups when you go across sports. Again, I'm sure I can get to a lot of different names. And it was just interesting to me, not just how many sibling groups there are, but um, multi-generational groups. And with as we go forward, that's only going to grow. That's only going to build because sports is only going to be around longer. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, here we're going to get to, as I said, my two gentlemen of the day. Peyton and Eli Manning, whose father, Archie, was also in the NFL. Now, I like this particular grouping, the Peyton, Eli, and Archie grouping, simply because they were all quarterbacks. A lot of times you get the sibling or the family grouping, and they are not of the same, uh, they don't play the same position a lot of times. A lot of times they may, they may not even play in the same era. Some of them, they may not play in the same amount of years. Some One may play two or three years before the other one comes in. However, with Peyton and Eli, even though, yes, there was a age difference, the accolades and the time in which they played kind of just went hand in hand. It just, they went, as soon as Eli came into the league, it was like, hey, there goes Peyton's little brother. And then it was like, no, there goes Eli. So um, I wanted to cover them. And just a quick tidbit, Another brother pairing that I really like and I really wanted to cover and I may cover in the future, it would be a much shorter episode, uh, will be Sterling and Shannon Sharp. If you do not know, um, Shannon wasn't the only Sharp that dominated the NFL and Sterling's numbers before he got injured were just insane. Um, But again, because he got injured, much shorter career, it didn't go, there wasn't, there's not as much to discuss. Um, and when you put him up against Shan, if you know what Shan does, you, you understand. So I did not get, I did, I'm not going to give too much information, but please go and look up Sterling Sharp, go and look up Shannon Sharp's work, look up his body of work, not just his mouth on uh, TV today, look up his body of work. It's amazing. And, um, let's move forward into today's pairing, Peyton and Eli Manning. Now, For those who are familiar, you already know where this is going to start. For those who are not, I'll let you know. We start with awards. Usually, I'm going to jump straight into what they did and did not win. And then we're going to get into what they accomplished through their season and their playoffs. This episode, I will not be doing averages. This episode, I will not be doing averages because this is not a competition. This is simply a recognition of brothers. Peyton and Eli Manning both have two Super Bowls. Two Super Bowls apiece. Eli Manning has been in four Pro Bowls, while Peyton Manning has been in 14 Pro Bowls. Peyton Manning has been the NFL MVP five times, while Eli Manning has never had that glory. 
Peyton Manning has been to seven, I mean, excuse me, has been named to seven all pro teams while also winning two offensive player of the years. Eli Manning has not accomplished um, either of those defeats in his career. <clears throat> Moving on to their regular seasons, regular seasons. Now, regular seasons was a little interesting to me because of the amount of games that were played. I, I It was, they're only about two seasons apart in the amount of games played. Um, whereas I want to say they're about four or five seasons in uh, apart as far as um, being drafted and the amount of time spent in the NFL. Keep in mind, both of these guys did have substantial injuries uh, kind of near the end of their career. Those who aren't aware, Peyton had a really bad neck injury, um, and he had to work his way back through that. It was an amazing comeback. And then Eli just, you know, got a couple of injuries as he was going through the, the motions. The team shifted. Things weren't going the way they thought they would. And there you have it. Both of these gentlemen played the majority of their career for one team. I don't remember Eli playing for anyone except the New York Giants. And my uh, research didn't prove any different. However, Peyton Manning did play for the Colts and he also played for the Broncos. So let's get into those season stats. Peyton Manning played 266 season games. Eli Manning played 236 season games. As I said, very close. Two season difference, 30 games. Um, there's 16 games per season. Thir no, 17 weeks. Well, by week. Okay, yeah. 16 games per season, so that would be 32. Just shy of two seasons. Completions versus attempts. Peyton Manning completed 6,125 passes and attempted 9,380 passes, while Eli Manning completed 4,895 passes and attempted 8,119 passes. For a completion rate, Eli had 60.3% completion rate a 60.3% completion rate for Eli Manning, while Peyton Manning had a 65.3% completion rate. Both of these gentlemen threw the ball and had a plus 60% completion. Peyton with 65% completion. Peyton Manning had 71,940 yards for completions were throwing yards, I should say, where Eli had 57,023 throwing yards. Peyton Manning had 539 touchdowns in his career. Eli Manning had 366 touchdowns in his career. Now, passer rating, I think, is a little more interesting because so much goes into that. There's a lot that goes into your passer rating, and it's not just whether or not you had completions or touchdowns. It's also about your decision making. How many times were you hit? How many times did you scramble? What? It's it's actually very interesting. I don't really know how to calculate it, if I'm being honest. But I almost sometimes think that a passer rating, um, or quarterback passing or quarterback rating, it equates somewhat to. Like when you're when you're going for the all star in basketball, right? I believe your quarterback passer rating equates somewhat to popularity. How popular were you in this game compared to other quarterbacks in their games? If that makes sense. Did you do the things that were going to make somebody say, hey, that's the guy I want at my starting quarterback? Or are you going to be, you know, the guy that everybody's like, all right, bench this guy, bring bring in the next guy. It's a very interesting statistic is what I'm trying to get at. Peyton Manning had a 96.5 passer rating, where Eli Manning had an 84.1 pass rating. Peyton Manning's longest pass of his career was 86 yards. Eli Manning's longest pass of his career was 99 yards. Peyton Manning threw 251 interceptions in his NFL career, where Eli Manning threw 244. I apologize for that, guys. 
where Eli Manning threw 244 interceptions in his career. Sorry, let me make sure I turn that down. I apologize. So after we get from interceptions, we go to sacks. How many times were each of these players sacked? Well, Peyton Manning was sacked 303 times in his career, where Eli Manning was sacked 411 times in his career. What's interesting about that to me, and the only interesting thing about that to me, is neither of these were mobile quarterbacks. These were pocket passers. So that means to me, there were times where they had really good lines and they probably weren't getting hit that often. And that's when they have really good seasons, right? And they also had great receiving cores. But then there were also seasons where maybe the offensive line was a little banged up. Everyone couldn't um, do their job. Or there were Warren Saps and Derek Brooks and Vince Wilforks on the other side of the ball. <laughs> you know, you football is one of those sports that sometimes you look at the statistics and you're like, man, this guy wasn't doing so well. It's like, nah, you might want to consider who were they going against for their career. Um with other sports, you know, most people look for your stars. Like, oh, well, if you have to play against this star, with it, the NFL, it's not so much of as a singular star for the NFL. You have to be concerned with every single position because you might play the worst team in the NFL that year, but they might have the greatest, the best uh, safety or the best defensive end or the best running back, someone who's going to cause problems for your team. Now, yards for loss. Remember, we're covering two quarterbacks. Both of these guys were sacked, one 303 times, one 411 times. For, so there, was, there were plenty of yards that were lost over time. Peyton Manning lost 1,953 yards over his career, whereas Eli Manning lost 2,870 yards over his career. Now, again, you have guys who are quarterbacks. They stay behind the line of scrimmage. They are not mobile quarterbacks by any means. So the only time they're going in front of the line of scrimmage is if there is a play call for them to run. The only time they're going in front of the line of scrimmage is when the coach says and or instincts say being behind the line of scrimmage is no longer working. So they are going to lose a good chunk of yards regularly when they are hit because every time they are hit, they are hit behind the line of scrimmage. Now, yards per attempt. I thought this was very interesting from season to playoff. And when I get to playoff, you will understand. Peyton Manning had 7.7 yards for every single attempt through his NFL career. Eli Manning had seven yards for every attempt through his NFL career. Now, again, these are quarterbacks. They don't usually cross the line of scrimmage. That is not their game plan. That is not what they came in to do. That is not typically what they are planning to do. However, this is the NFL, and it does happen. It is a necessary component. Again, there are times where instinct and or the coach would kick in. Maybe the coach says, hey, we're going to run a a quarterback sneak here. Hey, we're going to run an option play. Do what you need to do. Or maybe there's a play where you're looking for a play. Everybody's sealed up, but there's nobody rushing. There's nobody on the spy. There's nobody keeping an eye on the quarterback. He finds a patch. He has to take off. That happens quite often in the NFL because they are the greatest offensive players and the greatest defensive players. So when you need to improvise, you need to be prepared. That's what I believe happened for these two gentlemen here because they were not mobile players. So improvisation is what we will call it. They're rushing yards. They're improvisation yards. Peyton Manning and Eli Manning had... Rushing yards that purely came off of improvisation. There is no other thing that it could have come from. I, again, do not remember any point in either their careers where they were considered mobile quarterbacks. Peyton Manning, through his NFL career, had 431 rushing attempts for a total of 
667 rushing yards. Peyton Manning also scored a total of 18 rushing touchdowns. For every rush Peyton Manning had, he averaged 1.5 yards. His longest rush was three, excuse me, his longest rush was 33 yards, three yards past 30, 33 yards. Now, Eli did not, but Peyton did, and I will get back to Eli's rushing. Eli Manning had one reception through his entire NFL career, and it was for a negative two yards. He had one reception, and it was for a loss. Peyton Manning's only reception as a quarterback, of course, so quarterbacks don't receive the ball, they throw the ball. But Peyton Manning's only reception of his career was for negative two yards. Eli Manning's rushing or improvisation yards. Eli Manning's improvisation yards or rushing yards. Through his NFL career, Eli Manning had 315 rushing attempts for a total of 567 rushing yards. He scored seven rushing touchdowns. He averaged per attempt 1.8 yards. His longest rush was 18 yards. And again, Eli Manning never received the football, not once in his NFL career. Now, that is where we will stop for Peyton and Eli Manning. Again, I'm not going to do averages today because when I get into averages, that is when I feel we really get into the competitive nature of it all because we get into possession by possession. Um, we get into whether or not you will be useful in a particular moment when we start talking to averages, or at least that's how myself and the, when myself and the numbers get to talking, that's how it usually trends, right? But what I notice is... Peyton and Eli Manning, they do not have, they don't have uh, inconsistencies in their numbers. I had to find the word. They don't have inconsistencies. And again, I only covered the season numbers, right? I'm going to cover the playoff. I'm just not covering the averages. But that's where we'll stop as far as the stats um, for the season. What I love is, through a lot of the research I've done, through all of the, a lot of the, some of the episodes, some of the future episodes even that I've been looking and doing research on, sometimes you don't find a lot of consistency from playoffs. I mean, excuse, excuse me, from season to playoffs, and you don't usually find as much consistency when you have no players that have something in common, whether it's being brothers going to the same school. Um, it gets it's really interesting to me. It to me. To me, maybe it's not interesting to you, but it is interesting to me. So for the playoffs, you have Peyton Manning played 27 playoff games. Eli Manning played 12 playoff games. In the playoffs, Peyton Manning completed 649 passes while attempting 1,027 passes. Eli Manning attempted 242 passes in the playoffs. Excuse me. Eli Manning completed 242 passes in the playoffs and attempted 400 passes exactly in the playoffs. Now let's get to some consistency, right? Peyton Manning completed 63.2 passes percent of his passes. 63.2% of his passes in the playoffs. In the regular season, he completed 65.3%. Whereas Eli Manning completed 60.5%, so 61% of his playoff passes. In the season, Eli averaged 60.3, so a flat 60. He went up. He did better in the playoffs than he did in the regular season, albeit he played less games in the playoffs than the regular season. However, better completion. However, Eli Manning only threw for a total of 2,815 yards in the playoffs. Peyton Manning threw for a total of 7,339 passing yards in the playoffs. Peyton Manning also has 40 playoff touchdowns, while Eli Manning only has 18 playoff touchdowns. Keeping in mind that both of them are two-time Super Bowl champions. Peyton Manning and Eli Manning both have a playoff 
quarterback rating of 87.4. Did I say consistency? Consistency is still there. 87.4. Peyton may have dropped a little bit in his playoff, his percentage or, or quarterback rating, but Eli once again went up in playoff time. Big boy time, as we call it here, right? Peyton Manning's longest playoff pass was 87 yards, whereas Eli Manning's longest playoff pass was 72 yards. Eli Manning threw a total of nine playoff interceptions, and Peyton Manning has thrown a total or did throw a total in his career, a total of 25 playoff interceptions. Peyton Manning was sacked a total of 40 times in the playoffs and lost a total of 298 yards in the playoffs. Eli Manning was sacked a total of 27 times in the playoffs and lost a total of 100 and 55 yards in the playoffs. Let's get back to some consistency. Peyton Manning had 7.1 yards per attempt in the playoffs. In the regular season, he had 7.7 yards per attempt. Eli Manning had seven yards per attempt, exactly seven yards per attempt in the playoffs. In the season, Eli Manning had exactly seven yards per attempt per pass. So in the playoffs and in the season, Eli averaged the same amount of yards for every completed pass. Now, again, improvisation time. Don't think you stop improv You don't stop improvising when the playoffs come. If anything, you improvise more it's going to be a little more necessary. Things are at stake. There is no losing in the playoffs. You either go undefeated once playoffs start or you go home. That is how the NFL playoffs work. Peyton Manning had 32 rush attempts for a total of 34 yards in the playoffs. Peyton Manning has a total of three rushing or improv touchdowns in the playoffs. Peyton Manning had one or averaged 1.1 yards for every rushing attempt. And his longest improv improvisation run in the playoffs was 15 yards. There was no receptions for either Eli nor Peyton Manning in the playoffs. Eli Manning had a total of 20 rush attempts in the playoffs for a total of 45 yards. Eli Manning had zero running touchdowns, zero improvisation touchdowns. However, each of his runs came with 2.3 yards per attempt, and his longest was 14 yards. 14 yards was his longest run or his longest rush or his longest improv, whichever way you would like to go with that. I like improvisation, again, because we're talking about quarterbacks and they are not typically running or scrambling out of the pocket. These two particular quarterbacks, I do not believe that quarterbacks do not run. I believe that every player on the field and or or within the field of any play, every player knows what they are good at and every player is good at something different, even the ones we compare. I want to say to those out there who play sports who have friends or loved ones or just love sports, right? Make sure that you don't consider your teammates anything less than family between those lines. I see today there's a lot of talk about how the uh, opponents are too friendly. They're too chummy. I could understand. I, I, I could totally understand. But make sure that when you go to battle with that guy or that girl, that person who's wearing the exact same uniform that you are, that you're going to war with them and for them. NFL families, NBA families, AAU families, ABCD families, elementary families, it's all the same. It's all the same. Once you're on a team, you are exactly that, a family. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. It's just how it works. 
what I would like is for anyone who uh, has some feedback on this particular episode, comment on this episode. Um, you can email us over at ifnumberscouldtalk at gmail.com. You can also drop us some comments over at uh, dive at thinkring.space. You can visit us at thinkring.space. We're also working on a couple of other uh, web pages to put up for you guys. Uh, visit our Instagram. Check out any of our podcasts, the Exo Fathom podcast, Thinkring Talks, um, Screen Time Continuum. We are coming with as much as we possibly can give you. And the only thing we ask is that you enjoy the content and uh, let us know whether or not you're enjoying it or if, you know, a particular one is one you didn't like. And maybe, you know, we won't we won't make too many of those. I appreciate you. Enjoy yourself. Take care of yourself, those around you and those you love. See you next time.